Hey guys, this is Luke with Dad Life Chess, and tonight I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, a couple days ago, I was at a local chess club that I've been going to for the last couple months, I guess, and uh, there was an interesting game that I played there um, during a weekly tournament that we have, and I thought tonight, instead of playing a game on chess.com as a training game, I'm just going to take this game from Wednesday night and walk through it like I would a training game, go through it without the engine, and then look at what the analysis has to say. Um, I did glance at the evaluation just briefly, enough to know that it's an interesting game. Uh, I played a game 20, we do a game 20 tournament each Wednesday, and I played this particular game against a really strong player, a 2000 plus USCF uh, player who comes you know, off and on to these tournaments. And uh, yeah, it was an interesting game. So let's go ahead and jump in and I'll walk through it without the analysis first. And then after that, take a look at what we can learn from the engine. So uh, my opponent played uh, e4, and I played the Scandi. I play the Scandi because it has far less theory than e4, e5, or any of the Sicilians. Um, it's also annoying usually for e4 players, which is just an added benefit. They don't usually like to play against it. They feel like it uh, eliminates some of their uh, active options for play. In this case, um, I think all this was pretty normal. Normally, uh, this knight c3 move happens sooner, and the version of the Scandinavian that I play is the queen d8. Uh, I have experimented before with the queen a5, and I'd like to even pick that up again and start playing that more often, but right for right now, what I play um, every time is the queen d8. In this game, he didn't play knight c3, so my queen kind of stays out there until it's forced to move. It's generally not a good idea to move it without being prompted to. And I remember stopping here at this point in the game, and uh, to be honest, I don't, I don't think very many times have I gotten this exact move order on the Scandi. I checked, and my plan uh, was to go here to f6, put some pressure on this pawn after he, you know, after he attacked me with the bishop here on d2. And that's actually exactly what happened in the game. Again, I don't know if this is theory or been played before. Um, very well could be that it's not a good move at all, but that's that's what happened in the game. And I did see that if he played this pawn move uh, that I could take here, after takes back, this pawn is hanging. Um, and again, I'm not even positive that this is even an advantage at this point. I did see, obviously, that I'm at the rook. I'm on the rook in that situation, so he's got to do something about that. Um, and that is how it played out. And he decided to play knight c3. Um, this allowed me to get my bishop out with a tempo here. Obviously, I'm on this twice, so he has to do something to defend. And he plays queen c2. I didn't see this move right away. I was actually looking at what options I had. I saw that this knight was pinned. Uh, if it moves at all, then that rook falls in the corner. And so I was actually initially looking for some way to exploit that, that pin on the knight. And then I realized I could play the check here on e5. And there's no good way to block. Um, if you move the bishop, obviously this knight falls. You could try to block with, with the bishop. Um, but uh, f5, because that piece is pinned, loses the piece. And uh, what other option is here? Uh, oh yeah, blocking with the knight. Excuse me. Blocking with the knight here obviously doesn't work uh, because I can take with check. And then um, actually, before I do that, probably would be better to, yeah, take here with, with check first. Um, yeah, so I saw there was really no way to block. And so he was really forced to play f1. And I think this is the first point in the game where I felt like I at least had a shot here. I had some attacking chances and some, you know, real activity. Um, whenever you're playing a higher rated player, uh, at least for me, I always second guess myself. And so um, I didn't really know for sure that I was uh, doing well here. But at this point, I felt like this at least was a game. He forces my bishop back. And this really didn't worry me too much because with the king on this side, um, I actually wanted pieces pointed at this side. This rook is out of the game at the moment. You know, the king can't castle. And so this C2, or C7 square is actually where I was angling for anyway. It does advance these pawns, which I have to be wary of, but uh, didn't end up being an issue in this game. So here, he played 
Hanji three, and uh, apart from you know giving a spot for his king to obviously get tucked away here, I did notice that he was threatening this move. Um, bishop f4 secures my queen and my uh, bishop, and there's no place that I can go with that queen to you know also defend this bishop without losing one or the other. So I backed my queen up. That move also came with an attack on the bishop. I think he was planning to push his king here anyway, so that's probably not an issue. But again, it lets me develop with tempo again here. I, I moved this knight up. I'm attacking this with you know both my queen and my knight. So, and also on this pawn as well, putting some pressure here. So this move is the only move that really takes care of both of those threats. And one of the things I want to check on the analysis that I haven't looked at in detail yet is whether this was a mistake or not. I didn't have a concrete reason for Castle's queen side. I think I had this idea that at some point I could entertain the idea of you know, sacrificing the exchange because this bishop on this diagonal might be strong enough to justify that. Um, yeah, so I was thinking possibly, but at this point I wasn't actually calculating anything. It was just a decision and it may very well be a bad one. But he played here, I saw this move and, and pinned his knight. Uh, he can't move here at this point because his queen is undefended. So he plays bishop c3. No immediate threat here. I'm obviously on this piece. Um, he can't do some kind of discovery here with a check because I simply take back and, you know, my queen is defended. So there's no immediate threat here. So I moved my knight out here to f6. And now there is this threat of taking this knight, which is um, in danger of being lost. Can't uh, defend with his bishop because obviously he loses the piece. So really the only option here uh, was what he played in the game, which was f3. And at this point, I remember stopping again and just feeling like this looked really like a really good position for me. This bishop on the diagonal, this pawn is now not defended anymore by the pawn on f2. And so I just I felt like I had to have good chances here. Um, but again, it's all just uh, not from hard calculation, just from overall the feeling about the pieces. And here I think I, I made a decision after thinking about it for a while. I I did see in my just scan of the analysis that it was a blunder. I don't know why yet. I can walk you through what I was thinking and then we'll look in the analysis and see why it was a mistake. Um, but after he defends his queen, I played here. And I played this sack on f3. Um, so just really quickly, obviously, Queen takes doesn't work um, because I can take this knight and let's say, you know, queen takes here. That's a mate on g3. It's probably more natural uh, to take with the bishop anyway. And takes, takes with the bishop. Um, check here. But even this, as I'm looking at it, I don't think was probably warranted. I'm not even sure. Uh, we'll look in the analysis, but I think even that kind of a uh, sequence doesn't leave me with anything concrete. Um, after the game, someone commented uh, that simply taking bishop takes and takes with the queen really covers all those bases because when I check here on g3 and the king moves back, there's really just nothing there. Um, and he's one move away, you know, from moving his knight and, you know, putting pressure on this pawn. So I think this was probably a miscalculation. I, maybe because of the, you know, the position was a little messy. My opponent didn't notice that and instead took here. And I think at this point I realized my mistake with this knight. And uh, obviously taking here would open up this file and I thought that was good. But I thought there was a chance for me to save, you know, maybe save a little bit of that, of my mistake. And I moved my knight back. When I took with my rook, there is this uh, immediate threat, obviously, of winning the piece back. So he defends with the bishop. And here, um, I remember the feeling in the game. Again, over the board games, I don't know, I have a lot more emotion for me. And I remember feeling like I was in really big trouble here because I saw this check coming. And obviously, I lose my queen. And then I realized that, that f you know, f5 at least would save me from losing my queen. I did not know that this was a good move or think it was a good move. It just was the only thing I could see that would save that piece. Um, 
And then he really surprised me with G4. I was not expecting this. Uh, I did not think that what he wanted here was to open up this file with his king. At this point, he's not, not even threatening to take, obviously. Maybe he was expecting me to take. And then we have the same problem, obviously, where I lose my queen. Um, but I didn't take. Instead, I moved my rook over, putting some pressure here on the bishop. He defends that bishop, plays knight c5, and I kick that kick that knight so that I can take this piece. Um, this is where it gets a little interesting, and I probably should point out that, again, we're playing a game 20, and at this point, I'm... I know we were both under a minute. I think I was probably under 30 seconds, maybe under 20 seconds. So I'm really getting into time pressure here. He takes this rook for a brief second. I consider taking back. And then I realize that I can take here, defending this rook. Um, I don't think he can take back. I think this is really a really big problem. Uh, I didn't calculate too far. I just did not figure that was going to be a good move for him. So uh, instead he moves his queen. Again, I, I have like, five, 10 seconds at this point. And I, I saw this move. I have no idea what he was threatening. I, I was thinking maybe for a minute he might be threatening something like this. Um, check, forcing the queens off the board. Um, and he's certainly better there at that point, obviously. Um, but I didn't know for sure. I just knew that I was gonna take here and this double check, you know, check with the queen and the pawn. He can't take this pawn, obviously defended by the rook. So, this is the heartbreaking part. <laughs> he plays this move, and I think I had a few seconds here. Like, And I saw, I didn't play it in the game, but I saw this move, the check on f5. It's probably the most natural check. And I thought he would just move here to e1, and because I was so low on time, just a few seconds here, I did not see the very obvious follow-up. Uh, bishop g3 check. And in fact, in this particular line, uh, someone was pointing out to me in the game, obviously at the end, this is mate in two. Um, which, you know, with more time, I'm sure I would have noticed. I, I didn't see it in the game. At least I didn't see the bishop check. Um, someone after the game pointed out that probably a better move here after queen f5 check is to block. It, it does lose the queen, um, but probably is a better variation. At least extends the game a little further because uh, what I was imagining the king to do was to play e1. This is just mate in two. So he has to block here and then... There's a mate on F2. So yeah, a little bit of a bittersweet game. Obviously I did lose the, the game on time, but uh, against a really strong player, I feel like I, I played pretty well and um, had some chances here at the end for sure to win. And it was definitely in a winning position. And I think with more time, even, even though I wasn't as strong as he was, I think I could have found moves here and, and won this game. Um, but obviously the clock's part of the game. So, you know, you have to learn from that as well. Um, I am curious about a couple of these points in the game to see you know, what the advantage was or if I missed uh, an easier way to, to get an advantage and win. So I want to take a minute here and just jump over like I normally would in a training game and take a look at the analysis. Um, we're going to turn the evaluation on here and take a look at this from the beginning again. All right, so... This is all pretty normal. All right, looks like, interesting. It looks like they're saying that uh, C6 is an inaccuracy. Instead, they're wanting me to play, okay, uh, Knight F6. Huh, it's interesting. Usually in the Scandinavian, I usually am wary of this move because it usually comes with this pin, but I guess since the bishop has already moved here, um, that's not as much of a threat. Obviously, I can take with the queen if he does it right away. Um, and then castle's queen side is just kind of on the on the agenda if, if you know in that line. So it makes sense. I didn't even think about that in the game. Um, so I mean, not completely losing here or anything, but certainly that wasn't the most accurate move. I'll have to remember that move order in the opening. Yeah, here. So I'm curious here if. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, this is the best move to check. This is fine. Yep, b6. All right, yeah, and this is a mistake, and it looks like it's a mistake for the reasons that I that happened in the game, um, that I do pick up this pawn with an immediate threat on the rook. Knight c3, bishop pins. 
Okay, so these are all, you know, pretty much the best moves. I'm a little surprised here. I definitely expected, I'm only, you know, half pawn up here on the evaluation. I expected at this point that I was better off. I think I just felt comfortable with the position. I felt like, I mean, obviously this piece is out of play. The, the king can't castle. I mean, the computer is giving it, you know, basically even evaluation, but it just seemed like I had some threats here that were going to be a problem. Um, hmm. So even here, I mean, we're basically even. Yeah, I was curious about this move. So I'll go from 0.36, negative 0.36 to, yeah, but so it's about a pawn difference, uh, pawn loss here for this move. So, you know, not a completely losing move or anything. The, the evaluation here is that it's a good move, not excellent. Um, what are they suggesting instead? Let's see. Uh, knight e7. Yeah, makes sense. Just develop pieces here. Okay. Well, I was looking for some more, more activity, so obviously that's why I, I castled there. Oh, wow. So this is the first, yeah, first big mistake it looks like. Bishop c3. I wasn't worried about that move, but I didn't see that as being a big mistake. So that's interesting. Let's see what... Yeah, I guess it's because of the move I played in the game. That uh, puts immediate immediate pressure on e4. And at that point, f3 is... Okay, so in the game, I thought f3 was the blunder. And I guess what the computer's saying here is that this move, bishop c3, was actually the, the mistake because a couple moves later, it essentially forces f3, which did look to me like a weakening move. And it, you know, I think that that's what's going on here is I just missed the fact that this bishop move uh, would require f3 later on in order to defend that knight. All right, wow, negative, almost, almost negative six. Hmm. So this is that move, and I already know that it was a blunder. Like I said, I glanced enough at it to know this was a blunder. Um, let me just play through the line here and see. So let's see if I was right about what moves weren't possible. So here, yeah, so obviously this is an issue. I think at this point he actually has to ignore the piece. Um, or, yeah, or play g4, right? Because if he, you know, if he takes here, for example... That's mate in one. So that I did kind of run through really quickly. I think it's more natural anyway here to take with the bishop. Takes. Takes. Yeah, so it's it's not losing, which is interesting to me. I'm down a whole piece here, a piece for a few pawns. And I don't know like if I have any immediate threats here. Um, let's see. F5, interesting. Wow. Giving up the pawn. What happens if he just takes? It's a blunder. <laughs> of course it is, yeah. E3. Oh, it's because it opens up that file. Yeah. This is just, now I have both files to work with, so makes sense that taking that pawn is really not a wise move. Um, I mean, I obviously didn't see any of this in the game. I'm just, I was curious uh, on that particular move order there. So that looks like it was a mistake and it looks like the best move for him is just to take back uh, with the bishop, but he didn't. Instead he played here and it looks like that. Yeah, that was another, the first blunder of the game, I think here. Um, and I'm pretty sure my next move was not the right one. Yeah, so the computer's saying just take take back. And so here, if the bishop takes, probably the, the rook comes. Even before that, they're saying, yeah, keep my queen so I can keep the attack going. That knight doesn't really have a good place to go. Um, what are they saying here? G4? Wow, they're, they're not even recommending that I move that or that they save the piece. Take e4, bishop takes. And then g5, we play on. Hmm. So it's enough of a threat here where trying to, for example, save this piece is just, it's just a problem. 
yeah. I mean, obviously this looks really bad. I'll win the piece back here. That's, that's a really bad version of this. Let's see, what if we do... Oh yeah, there just isn't a way. There isn't a way to to save that knight because after checks, this this bishop's always falling. It's interesting. So so my move was a mistake. Um, I should have just taken with that bishop. Takes back, and I mean even here, I'm still up almost negative five. Yeah. Good, f5 was required. Best move here is knight f2. Inaccuracy, so what are they suggesting instead? They're suggesting that I take take the free piece. That, that probably makes sense, doesn't it? Wow. You know, I don't even think I noticed that that was a whole piece. I don't know how I missed that. I think uh, I think I thought that after I took, I wasn't going to be able to take back with the queen. I was going to have to, you know, find safety somewhere. Hmm. Wow, that was definitely a miss. So playing rook d8 did put some pressure, but not nearly as good as just simply taking that piece that was hanging. I mean, I'm, even with that mistake, though, I'm still it's still negative eight here. That's that's it's crazy. Um, he takes here. I'm curious about this move. Yeah. So f f f e uh, the f pawn takes g four is the best move. Yeah. This we're both under you know twenty seconds, under fifteen seconds at this point. So I don't. I know I'm going to criticize this move too much. I didn't know what the purpose of it was. Like I said, I think it was probably something like this. Checks, and then, um, yeah, and then it forces the queens off the board, which obviously is winning for him. But I didn't need to do that because this comes with check. Ah, oh, this is so painful. Negative 15. Yeah. So check on F, F5 here. I mean, among other moves as well. Um, Wow, so I, I lost here at this point. Right now, I, I ran out of time. So I ran out of time with a negative 24 advantage. That's, that's a pretty good position. Um, ouch. Yeah, and someone pointed this out after the game. It was somebody at the chess club was watching the end of this game as time ran out, and they said that this blocking, uh, queen blocking on F2 was probably the best move. But even this, I mean, obviously is completely winning. Mate in five. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. Well, that, that one's a little painful. I guess uh, I can take away, uh, I guess, just a little bit of confidence, obviously, playing well against a really strong player. But um, there's really, even with a few seconds, there's really no reason why I shouldn't have just played instinctively. Played enough Blitz and Bullet where I should have just instinctively played the check on F5. Made my opponent make the decision under pressure. Um, I think the, you know, the big problem for me is I just did not see this bishop follow-up move. I, you know, again, a few seconds left. I just didn't have a lot of time to look around and notice what was going on. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a painful loss for sure. Um, I guess it's a little bit of a win for the Scandi, you know, shout out to John Bartholomew who, who has been, uh, been the teacher for me on the, the Scandinavian, um, Definitely held its own in this game and got a really good position. And I guess I'll just have to um, look for my chances again next time. These games, these over-the-board games at the chess club have been really helpful for me. I find <clears throat> that I remember more of the game. Um, they're also, this is embarrassing for those of you who play chess longer, but uh, the Game 20 tournament that we have on Wednesdays at this chess club, those are the longest games that I've ever played. <laughs> so I've never played... Um, a game longer than, than a game 20. So for me, it, it, probably the reason why I'm remembering them is that I'm spending more time thinking about the moves and playing through them. So um, yeah, there's a lot, seems to be a lot of value there. Uh, obviously, I'll take the lessons I can from this, maybe take a little bit of confidence from the game. 
and then just try to do a better job next time uh, capitalizing on the position. Um, it's it's difficult for me trying not to fall back into the traps of bold and blitz and playing just quick moves and trying to win on time. Um, I really have been trying to make better moves and uh, in this situation, it, it didn't help me. I probably should have just played the easy check and uh, what's the, the famous quote, right? Uh, Always check, it might be mate. Oh, especially when you're under 10 seconds, that's probably a good rule of thumb. So, well, hopefully that was an interesting game at least to look at. And um, maybe I'll do this again, probably not every week, but if there is an interesting game that comes up on a Wednesday at the chess club, I'll go over that game instead of a normal training game and see if I can also learn from you know the mistakes and opportunities that I have in those over the board games. So thanks for watching. Have a good night, guys.